Hey Wanderers, and welcome back to Outlaws Wanted. Last time, the crew of the Honor awoke in the Domain of Chaos, a dark and endless ocean, on board a slightly anachronistic version of the Honor. Chaos found them while sailing his own massive ship crewed by barely formed creatures. Before getting gut shot by Vi, he warned that monsters awaited the crew before they could reach him. Slightly anachronistic? Slightly anachronistic. It's like saying, it's, it's like saying I have a computer that can fit into the downstairs of an office building is slightly anachronistic to having a cell phone. Look, on a large enough timeline, everything is basically the same thing. Anyways, where we had left off, all of you had just used Sully's ability to look at chaos from a distance in a direction to figure out, I don't know what ability to call that. Chaos Compass. Wow, that's really good, actually. <laughs> you use Sully's Chaos Compass, a thing that I just now am coming up with a name for, <laughs> to find three locations that seem to be a convalescence of chaos. You have a direction, you're on a boat. What's everybody doing? I'm checking out my penguin that you forgot to say was there. Mm. You look around the top deck of the boat. There is no penguin. Would you like to investigate further? Sure. I'll investigate further. <laughs> He's, you're gonna, you're gonna investigate the lack of penguin. All right, you scurry your way through the ship. There's only two decks. It's not that. It's not that large. You go into the belly of the boat, right deep in the cargo hold. And when you go down into the dark l room lit by just one swinging lantern, you can see glowing, fiery orange eyes and the silhouette of a sharp beak and muscular fins. As out of the shadows. Hops in a way that is kind of lumbering and uncomfortable given the roof and the lack of space to really maneuver. A giant, like, seven-foot-tall ripped penguin wearing an eye patch, and, you know, from the torso down, a black-and-white stripedy shirt, and it stares at you. <laughs> and then stares at the stairs, <laughs> and then stares back at you. All right, I found my penguin. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Just leaving him there. <laughs> he can come out on the deck. I'm not forcing him to be down there. No, I think he, looking pointedly at the stairs meant that he could not waddle up them. It's just really difficult for him, you know. If if you, like, walk away, the penguin, you can, like, hear, like, the th thump, the th thump, the th thump, as this, like, 300-pound penguin clunks its way over to the stairs and then laboriously makes its way up the stairs. All right, what's everyone else doing? Zach found his penguin <laughs> that I did, in fairness, I did forget to bring up last time, and that was my bad. <laughs> I mean, I think Mal is just steering the ship whatever direction Sully tells him to go. Cool. Yeah, you got a direction you can kind of hold on that course. You know, the I would say that the winds are existent but stagnant. It's not like these big gusting winds. It's all very calm and placid in a way that's, like, boring and morose. So you would say not hard, not chaotic, really. Give it time. Uh, I think Vi, um, probably at first tries to figure out, she's like, she's like doing stuff with the sails, but like there's only so much you can do. So at some point she like wanders down to the bottom of the ship looking for just something to do. Uh, and I assume there's gotta be like a galley of some sort. Um, yeah, so I would say, like, on, in, like, the lower belly of the ship, there's, like, a small table and some chairs, you know, and maybe, like, a, a like, chopping board with a half fish on it, you know, that you could hack up and eat if you needed to. I, in my head, I assume there'd be, like, barrels of, like, potatoes, and Ooh, she yeah, just starts, good. like, peeling them. <laughs> so you're just, you're just, like idle hands kind of thing, you know? Yeah, well, I think she's so used to, uh, like, when we're running on the actual honor, there's always things to do with the engine, and there's not that to do on a sailing ship, so it's just like, well, what do I do? And she's pretty comfortable in a kitchen, Do so. me a favor, I'm just, I just, I'm curious about this for flavor, do an investigation check with that sharp okay um to see if you can learn how to sail a boat that's a 10 so with a 10 basically what happened to you right away was you learned how to sail a boat far too quickly um uh, this both is not an overly complicated boat it has a single mass and one sail maybe two mm, let's say that there's two sails 
you managed to get those angled to maximize your speed pretty quickly. You got everything tied off and you felt very comfortable with all the rigging way too fast. And that usual like pulse of mechanical life that is present on a ship is completely devoid here. It's very quiet. It's like barely a whisper of wind, a little bit of creaking sails and wood, and that is it. Mm-hmm. And you can already like feel there's like this white noise itch that you're used to having that is just not present here as you basically silently slide across the ocean towards a mystery. So it's with that thought that you find yourself in the uh, kitchen galley, I guess on a boat it's called a galley, uh, in the galley peeling potatoes. Um, <laughs> once you get down there and start peeling, you look up and you see uh, Lucy also there like with the potato peeler doing the same thing. <laughs> like You're like just frustratedly like, yeah, dig out a knife and you're like peeling potatoes. Then you realize like someone else is there doing the same thing. Is Lucy feeding the scraps to the penguin? <laughs> no, the penguin's up on up on the top of the boat with you. He finally lumbered his way up there. You look like Lucy can't make that throw. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Vi and Lucy, I think, kind of sit there for a while, just peeling potatoes, and at and and like there, there's just like a very comfortable silence where that she, you know, one of them like tosses the other one. A potato. <laughs> I would say in this moment, Lucy seems very content and happy. Lucy's in great spirits. He's not chatting at the moment, but he seems, he does not seem disconcerted or miserable. He seems very happy. You, um, you enjoying not having your power armor or? Vika, your powers of perception are fantastic. I have never held a potato with hands. It is exciting. Huh. I'm not very good at peeling yet. It requires a level of dexterity I am used to being able to program. Yeah, I guess I, I never really thought that you've never actually held a potato before. Not in hands. Yeah, no, yeah, you know what I meant. Um, yeah, okay, actually, you know, if, if you hold it like this, and like, hold your knife like this, and you can, you'll get a lot more off that way. He, adjusts his grip and then just cuts his thumb <laughs> and is like Fika. Oh shoot. Um t- the novelty. The skin can be cut. Uh, it is fantastic. N- no. No, let's not let you b- bleed out. Uh do we have Vika, it hurts. Yeah, it I, hurts my hand. I understand that. Um <laughs> He, assume, he just starts wrapping it up like in cloth from his okay, shirt. Okay, yeah, I, I assume we were able to find something. <laughs> Sully walks by high. Oh God! Take him to Sully's <laughs> nightmare of a of a of a sick bay. Yeah, yeah, don't don't tell Sully about uh, that. I don't want you to have to deal with his current medical bay. Sully's still a good doctor. He still has mo- modern medicine. He's not gonna just hack so everything off. Like no, it's just what's it av- pirate times. It's just what's available. And- you seem to be adjusting. Less well. I'm guessing the novelty of having meat arms is less important for you. I I think it's more not having our normal ship. Uh, I'm not used to... Is it just me or is it really quiet here? Are you perhaps missing your exoskeleton? Uh, I guess that's one way of putting it, sure. I find the silence invigorating. Do you know what power armor sounds like? No, and I... He makes crude mechanical noises, like, on repeat, just, like, whooshing and hushing and beeping. The beeping! The beeping is maddening. You know, we've had this discussion before. I am constantly horrified at the new things I find out that power armor did to you. It's not great, but it is practical. I am concerned in this current realm. Well, you gut shot chaos. He was wounded. That kind of injury would have been non-existent for me up until now. No, I mean like the the beeping power armor. Like they didn't have a way to turn that off. 
Certainly there were methods of silencing the nuisance, but then something else would happen. I get a new alarm. For example, there were a lot of alarms going off when I first met you. You see, I was running out of air and also getting attacked. That was a time when there was a lot of sounds and noises coming from the power armor. Yeah, you know what? Uh, mm, Speaking of when we first met, I feel like I never got to tell you that I'm sorry I voted to throw you off the ship. It would have been the right choice. You know... Vika, we were enemies. The correct choice was to execute me. The fact that you didn't is foolish. I mean, maybe so, because, uh, the... Look, I, I... I've been doing a lot of thinking while we've been sitting here peeling potatoes, and, uh... I'm really sorry you got dragged into this. Like, I don't, you, prior I, you to should meeting, not, you should not have been brought here. That's very true. I should be dead. Prior to meeting all of you, I was loaded into a rocket and fired at a moving ship with the express purpose of destroying that ship while I was aboard it. I was meant to be dead. Many times, many times over. This is all basically borrowed time for me. So, I'm very happy that I've gotten to see anything. And I'm also very happy that I've gotten to have normal hands again. My point is, my life has gotten noticeably better since almost being killed by all of you. (laughs) I... I can appreciate your point of view. I think my point is that when death is the assumed outcome of most of my actions, things can't get worse. Whether I get killed by chaos here, or whether I got killed being launched into your ship there, it makes very little difference. Risking my life is what my entire existence has been built to do. I'm still going to feel awful (laughs) that we got you dragged into this. If not this, I would still just be serving the imposition. Mm. I guess at least you got to learn how to cook. I got to learn how to cook. I got to meet all of you. I got to see a lot of wondrous things. And maybe got away out of the imposition, which I'm just going to say, probably not the best place for people to exist. No, I kind of got that uh, impression every time My point we dealt is, with them. I could have jumped ship at any point. I did not. I'm choosing to be here. I was not drug. I'm quite heavy. I don't think you could move me. <laughs> I I think you're probably right. Uh, well, uh, I guess despite still feeling bad that you got dragged into this, uh. I know I how assure- you may repay me. I was going to say, I can assure you we're happy that you're here, but uh, okay, how can we repay you? What do you do with peeled potatoes? <laughs> there's there's lots of, <laughs> lots of recipes we can use these for. Is there now an absurd amount of potatoes just peeled? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, and a few fingers. <laughs> so he knows that he's supposed to peel the potatoes, but he doesn't know what to do with them afterwards. I love it. Yeah, I mean, he's never cooked with potatoes before. I don't think that I have established that he's ever made something with a potato before, so I can go with that. <laughs> well, also, I would think that he has, like, a tablet's worth of recipes, so he probably doesn't have, it, like, them saved, you know? Like, he hasn't sat there and memorized Well, them. yeah, because he would have them on his internal brain banks that he no longer has. Yeah. Also, they're all probably four variations of gruel. <laughs> well, no, because he's been cooking with you guys for a while. But he if has never... made us lots of excellent dishes. I think he's made us a few edible dishes. As I think what we've established canonically. He's working on it. He's working on getting better. Always striving to be better. No, I will say the problem is the next thing I was going to do is ask Jyla what she is doing. And Jyla currently is just standing in the middle of the ship, staring at the sky in awe. And that's how she's going to stay for a little bit. Good. Anyone else want to do anything while Jyla's in a trance? Not here. I mean, I was going to join Jyla for her scene and, you know. <laughs> you walk up to Jyla, she's in a trance. You try to wake her, but she <laughs> cannot be awoken. Also, just so everyone who's listening to this podcast know, currently Caitlin is away from her mic, and that's why I'm saying that she isn't. There isn't actually like a mystery of the Jyla trance that you guys need to work out. <laughs> so wait, if if she goes into a trance and here, does that mean she wakes up in the physical? 
world again? No, she goes deeper. <laughs> it's oh, like Inception. Oh, it's just like gotcha, more levels. Yep. She's in limbo. I mean, if you want to try to like awaken your body, you know, I mean, you guys can make rolls and try to make magic happen. If I'm making magic happen, I'm making it happen in a different way. Do you and your penguin need some alone time? <laughs> so, no, the penguin will be my bo- will be the bodyguard guarding the lower decks while me and Chilo are busy. And then all of a sudden, Chilo awakens from her trance. Chilo awakens from her trance after staring into the sky for a long time. Sully's looking at her, kind of concerned. Uh, what? Why are you staring at me like that? Why are you staring at the sky? I was just. Well, to be honest, I was I was planning out a new bomb with all the. All the powder they've got down there. You see how many powder kegs we have? It's exciting. Sometimes I wonder why I ask what you're thinking about, because it's always the same answer. Well, sometimes I'm thinking of you. Not usually when I ask you what are you thinking about. Well, I guess and, you could ask more often. <laughs> and I feel like half the times you say me, you're embarrassed to say that you're thinking about a bomb, and you say me instead to sound cute, and I'm pretty sure that's what happens. I'm known for multitasking. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so, Jyla, I think before you went into your weird fugue state, you said that you were going to try to uh, investigate the ordinance on the ship. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, go ahead and roll me one of them um, one of them investigation checks, which is rolling plus sharp. Okay. That's an 11. All right. So with an 11, um, there are several cannons on board. I say several. There's probably like two aside. It's uh, still a relatively small ship. Okay. I want to say on the honor previously, let me look at the status sheet here. You had a thing that did like shield interference, right? Like uh, you had a cannon that did like some damage to shields. You had like two different kinds of cannons. I'm not sure how much we specifically played that with that. But what I will say is that basically... You have the option of firing regular cannonballs that are just like traditional, you know what, you know what I'm, you know, I say cannonball. I don't feel like I need to explain it, but now I'm hedging. They do damage. I feel like I do. It doesn't matter. They shoot cannonballs. (laughs) Um, or you, they shoot what? (laughs) Or, um, you can fire like non lethal nets, essentially. Those are your options. Well, what's the ones that like, uh, it's like two of them and they whiz around. Chain shot. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want chain shot? I was thinking of something that would maybe... If you want chain shot, you can try to make it with the supplies at hand, but that'll be another roll, because you do have that, like, Mad Alchemist skill, which I'll say Mad Alchemist roughly in pirate terms translates to I can make chain shot. (laughs) I do like how Cody's like, here's a non-lethal option, and Caitlin's like, how do I wreck their shit, though? (laughs) (laughs) Like, real bad. I I was just thinking of a thing. Nets is fine. Um, I, what would that do exactly? That would like pin people to the deck. Yeah. So if you imagine what happened to you, if you got a net dropped on you, that's what it does. It's a non-lethal option. Like, so you try to move your arms, but you wouldn't be able to, and you might fall down and, okay. you know, be stuck for a minute until someone gotcha. can help you get the net off. Cause they're heavy. Yes. Okay. Like, like how nets do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, nets aren't in Sea of Thieves, man. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't just Sea of Thieves, it's different. It's a different property. Yeah, it's FTL. <laughs> it's not that either, shut up! That's just what Outlaws Wanted was in ship-to-ship combat. Uh, Alright, so, anyone else want to establish anything else? Talk to anyone about anything? I don't think so, I think Sully's feeling pretty... As good as one can, being drawn into the enemy, or his enemy's lair against his will, and having his friends threatened in front of him. All right. So, as you continue to sail, time slides past, and you can already feel your mind starting to wander, as mostly you're just looking at empty sea, as you travel unfathomed miles to whatever you are headed towards. One thing that all of you notice without any kind of checks necessary is that it does not seem like there is a solid day-night cycle, and none of you are getting sleepy. You're just continuing on through seemingly a void, right? Right. However, far, far off, um, as, like, you begin to see on the horizon there is something, and, Sully, you maybe start to gather a sense that there is something, there's, like, a weight in your mind as you draw closer and closer and closer to this tiny dot on the horizon. You see something that maybe you would think of as an island, right, way out there, and as it starts to grow and grow and grow, you can see that it is, in fact, like, it kind of looks like a... mm, a softly rounded mountain, so it's not, like, super steep, just 
nice, gentle, green mound sitting way off in the distance. You can see some distinct rocky outgrowths on it, but mostly it just kind of looks like a nice, mossy dome way off there. What does everyone do now that you have your first sight of Chaos's first monster? The monster is the island? It's, it is the thing that you are going towards, right? Like, e- okay. Sully said this is where, this is where there is a confluence of chaos. It is this, like, mossy green island way out there. Uh, Vi is going to, uh, climb up the mast into, uh, the crow's nest. Okay. And, uh, I'm gonna pull out my blunderbuss that can, like, change into whatever tool I need. Uh, so I can use it as like a spyglass. Oh, cool. So you pull out your blunderbuss and I'll say as you sight down it, you kind of like, there just is a scope on the top of it, you know? Yeah. And as you sight down, you get a slightly, you know, zoomed in version of what you are sailing towards. Roll me an investigation check. And I'll say you can have one for using that tool. Yeah, no. Oh, what'd you roll? That's a five. Oh boy. Yeah. So it sure is greenish. Rocky outcroppings. Seems to be about the size of an island. Vi leans over the nest, uh, sighting, and calls down, Sully, are you sure this is where we're supposed to be headed? Just looks like an island up there. I mean, yes. Can I try to reach out and, like, with my weird harmony powers to, like, touch it? Yeah, you can. Go go ahead and try to do that. That'll be a 12. What do you want to do, specifically? Can I talk to it? Sure. What do you what do you want to say into this thing? Hello. Uh we are we were sent by Chaos to fight you, but we'd rather just work together. Trying to think of the right way to phrase this to make sure you understand correctly. I, th- I think this is one of those instances of like just because it doesn't go the way you want doesn't mean it was a bad idea. It's one of those instances. Cody, I, I trust you. I, I trust you as a DM. You don't need to justify it every time. No, no, no. I just I just want to make sure you understand like no, okay. it's it's I'm not I'm not like worried about that. I'm just okay. being I was saying this for the sake of clarity. Um so like I said, mossy green dome, uh rocky outcroppings all over it. You as soon as you do that you just have a splitting headache that like almost staggers you to your knees as the island visibly rotates and then you can feel the ocean slope. So as if water is being pulled towards this island, you can feel a distinct current and a rush as you are pulled towards this thing. At the same time, you can see wakes building up slowly around this thing as it starts rushing towards you. You are being pulled inexorably towards this thing that is now flying towards you at speeds that an island should not move. What does everybody do? Does that prove it to you, Vika? Uh, yeah, didn't see that it through the spyglass. Uh, and Vi, uh, slides down from the mast. Y'all are being way too calm about, uh, slanting to our doom, apparently. Oh no, just Running to grab stuff to fill up, I guess, the cannons, unless, Mal, you want me to, I don't know, I, I, I don't think we need to pull the sails up. Is the, the cannons are probably, we probably armed the cannons already, like. Yeah, they're loaded, but if you yeah. want to be, like, you know, getting on them and getting ready to take aim, that's a fine thing to be doing. I think Jyla is, like, hanging on to one, but I imagine the ship is kind of at an angle. Like yeah, not- so you would be at an incline as, like, water is basically sucking towards this thing that has suddenly started moving. Yeah, she's hanging on to a cannon and trying not to slide down the deck. <laughs> uh, Malcolm, make a piloting check. Okie dokie. What is it called when you're on the helm check? Whatever. Whatever the boat equivalent of using the big boat wheel is. <laughs> That's a nine. Uh, seven to nine is the range for mixed success, right? Yes. So. As you're, like, picking up speed, you can feel the ship groaning as it's no longer wind that's directing your course, and at some point it's also really no longer the rudder. Like, you're not so much steering as you're just, like, 
you're going this direction now you can kind of like swerve in that as you're just trying to maintain control of the ship and keep it from like going sideways and then tumbling which is kind of what you're at risk of doing you're picking up speed to the point where a collision is becoming possible how do you want to try to avoid that uh i mean i don't want to collide <laughs> no i mean this can be as simple as turning stopping trying to go the other way you know just like kind of described to me like okay you're on a boat going towards a solid thing <laughs> like you know what i mean oh yeah i mean i would try to i would try to so there's like a are we sloping straight towards it or are we sloping kind of an angle towards it it's rushing towards you you are the water is being sucked towards it for whatever reason okay so you're like literally head on about to collide with this thing like yeah this I, thing that is the size of an island it is moving straight towards you i would try to steer it steer into its wake okay Gotcha. And try to, and trying to get alongside it. Gotcha. If possible. So as you do that, you can feel the ship groan as like ropes start to snap and you can feel like the boat beginning to warp and stress. You can hear like fractures underneath as you begin to take on a little bit of water just from trying to course correct in this very extreme circumstance. As you manage to bring yourself just to the side of this thing as you come across it, what is everyone else doing? Can I try to help either, well, who's our firing cannons, which I assume is at least Jyla, if not both of them. Can I try to uh, help them with that by using weird powers to try to hold the thing in place? Yes, you can. Oof. Nope, I don't. Oh, no, I do. I do. Yeah, I got a seven. Uh, okay, so you have one camaraderie to spend on this roll. So who's ever firing a gun can take that. Okay. I assume that's Jyla. It sure is. Okay. Um, I got a seven, so I won't use that camaraderie. Or do, do I have to? I think the stipulation is you have to. Okay, yeah. it's an eight. Okay, so as you come across this thing, Sully, you try to stop it in place with, you know, your weird magics that you have, and it doesn't stop per se, but it slows. Like, it's not hurtling as quickly, and you're also kind of getting out of the immediate, like rushing water pull that this thing had um as you try to kind of set yourself up or like you almost can adjust your ship to give better angle and kind of like give jyla a moment of good shot uh jyla as you fire you launch a cannonball it hits directly into the side of this island and it makes a kind of echoing thump as it hits the island and just kind of bounces off of it. Like, you can see a scuff mark in, like, the mossy green exterior, um, but that is about it. Try the nets! <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, so that leaves Fika. Yeah, um, uh, I guess I should have gone earlier, because I was gonna, um, either fire a cannon or, um, roll to help Mal with the ship by, like, being on the sails you can do that now that'd be fine that's okay okay yeah, yeah. we'll just we'll just give that a camaraderie to the next roll okay yeah so uh i'm gonna be um like pulling the sails taut yeah i mean they would have definitely areas. gotten like knocked just you so if you want to start giving yourself wind to actually maneuver after you kind of brush past this thing instead of running smack into it you'll need wind to do that yeah. so that makes sense okay so go ahead and roll a we'll say repair or no, this will just be help a friend, yeah. Um, not to be pedantic during the combat, just for going forward. Aren't we all supposed to say what we're doing first and then we roll all at once for ship combat? Um, yeah, yes, yes. We'll just say yes. Yeah, there's a slight caveat there, but eh. This is kind of like the round before you're in proper combat with this thing, so it's... Okay. No, okay, that's fine. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to be, as I said, not trying to be pan pedantic. I'm just trying to, like, make sure, like, we're playing the way we're no, supposed to be you. playing. You know, it's been months. With help a friend, uh, is that straight, or am I adding anything? You would be help you, you, uh, add whatever skill you're using to help the friend. In this case, that'd be sharp. It is sharp. Okay. Um, that is a nine. Uh, okay. So, uh, Malcolm, next roll around. You have one camaraderie to add to you trying to pilot the ship. Um, okay. So... As you rush past this island, it suddenly grinds to a halt, 
and again just rotates to face you, this time not immediately moving, um, but you can see the, like, outcroppings of rock beginning to glow as if there is magma underneath of them. What is everybody doing? Now we're more in, like, proper ship combat, just so you're aware. So, unless someone else thinks they should do this instead, can I, like, I'm sure, or, Michael, has Jyla made, like, some powder keg bombs? Like, while we were waiting, doing nothing? Sure. Can I kick those over, like, the back, so, like, while it's trying to suck us in, it pulls in the bombs first, you know, a la video games where you sit the bomb down and run the opposite direction? Yes, you can. Um... So you just want to basically kick barrels overboard and then, like, be sailing away as those barrels fall in the water, like, generally at the direction of this thing? Yeah, and basically, so, like, when they suck them up, they explode. Gotcha. Okay. What would I add to that, Smart? Uh, we'll let everyone declare their action first. I am... Vi is going to keep tugging on those sails because if there's magma coming at us... Um, we're going to want to get away as fast as we can. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess that's going to add another camaraderie. Um, we're actually going to call that, um, bu- 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 avoid damage. Okay. Uh, okay. Malcolm and Jyla. So my problem right now is that I, I think I want to do something to collect water so that if we have an opening, we can get water into the magma part to like, cool it down and like make it rock instead of liquid and I assume that will maybe do some damage so that can just be like hoisting up water from the ocean if there's water like sliding across the deck she's getting it in a barrel (laughs) okay let me better explain what you're looking at Okay. This thing is the size of an island and you're on a ship that's sitting maybe five feet off the ground These outcroppings of rocks are, like, well above your head, and also you would have to be right next... It's an island, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't, like, throw it, like, a like you can't, like, splash a water bucket at it. It's both far away, (laughs) like, comparatively, because it's huge, and also very massive. Now, your impulse, though, I don't want to discourage. Does that make sense? Okay. Like, but imagine you were on a... So I, I'm, like, not... I'm not in a situation where water could make a meaningful change, even though water could theoretically make a meaningful change on the object, just not in the position that I'm in. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, okay, let me, let me reel back from this as, like, a GM explaining things to you. Like, metagame a little bit here. Um, you are right to be looking for an alternative solution to the problem. Okay. But within the narrative, you have to understand this thing is the size of an island and is mobile. Okay. <laughs> and you are talking about bucketing up water and basically throwing it at a volcano. Yeah. What if, what if, um, instead of like bucket and throw it in, it's something that you could put in the cannons? Uh, yes. I like that. Make it like a suppressing cannonball. A water gun, a water cannon. <laughs> a water cannon. Next up, t-shirt cannons for the next box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that viable is option, feasible. right? Okay. But what you're going to have to do is figure out a way within narrative to tell me how you're making a water cannon on a boat, which I am not saying is impossible, but in my mind, I do not have a clear image of how you would chuck a bucket of water from a ship to a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think she should be collecting water well, and then pouring it into, like, making a hole in cannonballs, pouring it in there and, like, plugging it. Okay. Okay, so. With you're... a cork. And so then I'd be, like, firing the cannons, but they'd be full of water. Gotcha. Okay, so you're going to have to. So getting water, don't have to worry about that, but you are going to have to make a roll to, like, rapidly construct hollow filled cannonballs craft this okay so malcolm what are you doing uh mal is trying trying to ma- keep making sure we don't run into this island and trying to like present a better angle for them to do their water cannony stuff <laughs> uh so i will say basically you're avoiding damage with that because they aren't they are not yet even able to fire so we'll see how the rolls go okay all right so um sully i would say what you're doing is cool 
Mal, I think that's also cool. Vika, I think that is sharp. And Jyla, I also think what you're doing is sharp. So everyone, make your rolls. Ten. Seven. Thirteen. Eight. So, there's this brief pause where the island in front of you is just glowing. Um, and in that moment, you all spring into action. Jyla, you rush below decks and start trying to find hollow cannonballs that you can stuff full of water. Basically, what you find is, like, an auger and cannonballs, and you're sitting there having to, like, drill holes as fast as you can in cannonballs and then, like, plug them with cork that you find down there and then scoop water into them. So, it's a difficult process that is taking time which basically just equals out to taking damage. Meanwhile, Sully, you get the not at all unreasonable idea, like, throw the throw some barrels at this thing. Let's see what happens, right? Um, meanwhile, Vika and Malcolm just get the ship moving again to try to, like, get out of the way of whatever is coming. So, Jyla, while you're underneath, you feel a sudden lurch of motion as the ship catches the wind and takes off. Um, Sully, you kick the barrels overboard, and they do start kind of drifting towards this island. You feel another pull of current, and those barrels sink closer, like, go underwater, and then the fuse goes off and they explode. As that happens, you see the massive head of a turtle or tortoise rear up, its ancient and, like, craggy face barely scorched by this tiny barrel that's exploded, you see one massive fin raise out of the water almost in slow motion as it comes crashing down to maneuver itself to face these rocky outcroppings that look like volcanoes at you that are uh, like that reach a like peak of glowing and then massive rocks just come flying out of all of these rocky outcroppings towards you as the turtle maneuvers itself and gives chase. So all of you on the boat, there is both this initial crash of water, as you can again hear, like, boards splintering, and the, like, Jyla, while you're underneath, you can feel water rushing in as just, like, gaps are opening from the stress of the boat. Meanwhile, on deck, massive boulders are just smashing into the deck, breaking rails, fracturing the mast, doing damage all over the surface of the boat, as your ship takes... Three damage. Wow. It's bad. Um, and I'm going to say, based on that, your... So we'll say that the engine room is going to roughly translate to... Um, oh, shoot. Right, I have to do this on the GM thing. We're going to say the engine room roughly translates to the sail is damaged, the helm is damaged, and the gunnery is damaged. I'll repair the gunnery. You're going to repair gunnery? Yep. No, 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 no. You're going to keep firing and making your cannonballs. Well, I was going to okay. say, you have choices to make here. You have not finished making cannonballs. Oh, okay. That's thing one. Thing two is repairing the gunnery means not shooting or working on the cannonballs. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. So what's everyone else doing? I'll keep working on the cannonballs then. Uh, Vika's going to jump into repairing. Uh, okay. What are you going to work on repairing? So what what so gunnery is our cannons. Yep. Helm is steering. Steering. Engine room is the sails. The sails. Yeah. Oh geez. Either the sails or the helm. Um both of those seem pretty you know what? I'm gonna do um the sails first. Okay. Because if we can catch wind, kinda like well Yeah, that's fine. Who knows where we're going? <laughs> um, I will repair the helm, then. Uh, okay. Or no, I'll I'll, I'll repair the guns. I I want to. I wanna, well, we still have one gun. What does get damage guns do? Uh, so it works as just a whole subsystem. So you're just rolling at a disadvantage if it's damaged. I'll do helm first because Vinny will probably be doing stuff with that. Yeah, I was I was gonna say like mm, the power gamer in me would say you can't use the guns yet, anyways, because you're working on ammunition. So repairing them this turn doesn't help you. Cool. All right, Malcolm, what are you doing? Uh, trying to keep steering this boat, keep trying to prevent damage, trying to keep those rocks from falling on us because that hurt. <laughs> All right. So you are bobbing and weaving the boat as meanwhile, Sully and um, what? <clears throat> I don't think a system can be used if it's being repaired. 
Um, no, it says it just says it says, it says repairs trigger last is what he says in the thing. Hang on, let me look. I believe because I've done um, repairing a lot, I if I'm working on something, someone can't use it. Okay, so as it is written, Zach is technically correct. Yay, the best kind of correct. Um, it does not say that a person cannot be repairing as they are also using that subsystem. It just says that the repairs trigger last. That being said, I think, Mandy, you're correct. That is how we had been ruling it. I am going to say in this case, I'll allow it, but it is just that the repairs trigger last. Okay. So No, that's fine, as long as we're consistent. If There's Zach no is working on the helm... For Vinny, Vinny does not get to... Vinny is going to be rolling at a disadvantage for his turn until the helm is repaired. Okay. Okay, so everyone make your rolls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they, they narratively end up being... Or they mechanically almost end up being the same thing, you know? Uh, well, no, they... It would be another turn of having that system be damned. It would basically be that Vinny wouldn't be able to even try to pilot this turn because you would have knocked him off of it to repair. But I'm fine with the idea of him working with the wheel as you're trying to, like rehook up the pulleys and like nail a board into place to like get yeah. it working again. I'm fine with that happening at the same time. Um so, anyways, everyone make your rolls. That was a valid question to bring up though cuz I understand that that is a, d- a difference, I believe. Um are repairs smarts? Repairs are sharp, yeah. Um I got a 10. I got a 9. 8. 7. Oh, sorry, 7 because of the minus 1. I got a 9. Is there any camaraderie to push me to a 10? No. Okay. There is not. All of you spring into action and attempt to fix your ship. The uh, helm and the uh, sail are both repaired, and you now are able to catch wind again well as Malcolm is trying to pilot you out of the way of this just cascade of boulders that is crashing around you. As the rocks are falling, you know, you're able to mostly steer out of the way, but... There's only so much you can do, and in trying to protect the deck of the ship, you're still going to take some amount of damage, which basically means that you have to sacrifice the top. So what happens is, as you're trying to keep the deck from getting hit, the top is just getting pummeled, and you hear a crash as the crow's nest is shattered off the top of the mast, which is still standing, but is now shorter and no longer able to be climbed up to get a higher perspective. You guys managed to get your ship mostly under repair, but have taken more damage um, while doing that. So you've taken... Oh, wait, sorry. And, Jyla, what did you roll again? I got a nine. Okay. So with a nine, you managed to finish making one of these little water bombs as this creature is still just hailing meteors down atop your ship. But you now have one completed water bomb, and your ship has taken two damage. All right, so we're back around. Uh, Vi- Vi's gonna move uh to fix the gunnery. Are you are you planning on shooting this time, Caitlin? Uh, yes. Can I help her target? Like, hit, like help move, nudge the cannonball in the right ways to like knock it into the like right into the lava flows. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. Same old, same old. Just trying to steer the ship and prevent us from taking damage as much as possible. Well, okay, now this is a distinction. Do you want to try to give an advantage to the shots, or do you want to try to avoid damage? I want to try to avoid damage, because we're taking a lot of damage very quickly. Okay. Zach, Zach, I think I want to take another turn to not fire. Is that okay? Do you have something else you can do? I mean, I guess. What do you want to do on your turn? I was going to use my bombardier skill of pinpoint a weak point so that I can try to gain a plus one on a future roll I, using that info. Gotcha. Well, is it a permanent plus one, or is it a one-time plus one? Uh, I gain plus one to rolls that use this information. You would also be rolling at a disadvantage right now because the gunnery is getting repaired, so it is not a bad time to take a pause and gain information. Is there anything else that needs to be repaired that you could do so? Um... The, well, technically the crow's nest is destroyed, but... Uh. This may be a bad time for this question, but we're in Chaos's world. Can you manipulate anything the way that you do in the cognitive realm? I cannot. Okay. Not not nearly as much. It okay. is a little bit, but far weaker. Okay. Can I just, like, take barrels, and they don't necessarily need to be all powder kegs? 
and I want to create like a like do like the create trouble or whatever it's called. Oh, what do you want to do with them? Basically, I want to kick over like two dozen barrels. And, like, they may or may not have powder, but it doesn't know that. Oh, so you're, like, trying to make, like, so you're, like, hoping that it, it like, is distracted by those and tries to avoid them? It's making, it, yeah, you're yeah. making an obstacle course. Right, whereas it's, like, I just, like, kick barrels off every side of the ship, and all of a sudden, like, well, now there's 12 barrels he needs to avoid, maybe? You know, I'm not saying they actually do anything, but it's, like, he doesn't know they do nothing, you know? Uh, yeah, that, that works. I like that. Um, so what what I'll say then is, okay, and you want that to be create trouble for that thing? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think of the right way to read that. Okay, got it. Yep, that is fine. All right, everyone, roll your appropriate skill checks. Is that, is mine sharp? Yeah, I would call, eh, I would call that cool, because I'll call, I'll count that as somewhat with gunnery. All right, I fail. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, I got a nine. Eleven. Oh, you got an eleven, Vinny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. gum. That plus three's got to be helpful at some point. Yeah, no kidding. I've just been rolling really bad. I mean, it's been helpful. You haven't really failed yet. <laughs> I got a 14. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You Perfect. see into its soul. So, right, so I find a structural weak point, and I gain plus one to rolls that use this information. Yeah, um... So its mom forgot to call on its birthday and it feels really sad about that. Its mom called the day after. Vika, you rolled a 9. Okay. So Vika, you managed to find like all the like broken ropes and hinges that were used to control this cannon and allow it to actually be aimed and you kind of band-aid it back together just as Jyla seemed like she was about to load the cannonball but took a moment and hesitated and like tried to gain perspective on the situation. And as she did this act of pausing and waiting and looking at this giant daunting creature and not immediately rushing towards it or immediately trying to explode it, but rather analyzing this seemingly impossible feat, she can like, in your mind's eye, you can see like the heart of this creature, like this glowing lava core that would be protected by layers and layers and layers of impossible to penetrate rock and shell and like grown on armor that would be impossible to ever break but all of the death star there is just like the one perfect point where you can land one shot and that immediately becomes apparent to you almost like it has been highlighted you, you know like eagle vision right like suddenly that point is glowing in your mind like a beacon that cannot be missed (laughs) like that is exactly where we need to hit and as you have that thought you both feel like a slight I'm trying to think the right what would be like a, a vertigo as the ship suddenly snaps into motion and Malcolm is just as you know like leaf on the wind right dodging every rock, every like tidal crash of this creature as your vision is still just focused on one point and you feel a dizzying sense of vertigo as you just like tunnel vision onto it. You guys take no damage. Cody, I get nervous whenever you say leaf on the wind because that means I'm about to die. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? That that uh, that has like a, a dire side on the other half of it. Notice how you didn't say you're not about to die, Vinny. <laughs> right, he just- he did not refute it. I didn't say you're not about to die. I will say that, um, like, this is at the end game and player death is not impossible. <laughs> um, like, it's not, I'm not trying to kill any of you, but if the dice rolls go absolutely south, this is at a point in the game where I'm comfortable with players dying. And there is, like, contingencies for that. So none of you are immortal anymore, except kind of Zach. Uh, anyways, you take no damage this turn. Vinny, I'm sorry you're going to die because he said the dice rolls go south, you know? <laughs> right. Well, all those dice are locked in dice jail, so it's it's okay. All right. What's everyone do? You're bobbing and weaving, taking no damage, and Malcolm's beginning to get, like, an itching feeling on his chest, like he's about to be impaled by something. <laughs> 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 like, this triumph cannot last. He just sees, a, like, we see, like, a sniper scope red dot on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> my, my shirt's not red. It's okay. I'm going to do what I was going to do last time and help Jyla make the shot. That's good, because I'm going to try to make that impossible shot. I'm going to continue leafing on the wind. (laughs) 
are you uh, avoiding or trying to like give good angles to this like one impossible shot that you have i think i'm gonna try to help the one impossible shot all right I am also going to help the one impossible shot (laughs) by... I really want to know how. (laughs) Well, so my thought is um, using the sails to get the right angle. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's got to be open to one side, shut on the other. It's how... It's hard to explain. It has to, like, catch catch the wind so we can get, like, a burst of speed to get high enough. Because yeah, well, right, and it's almost like you have to match speed with this thing and trajectory. So like you have to be going in the same direction and also matching its speed perfectly. So that way, when you launch the cannonball, it's actually like even remotely possible for it not to just totally miss either ahead or behind. You know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's one, two, three. Potentially three camaraderie being added. Yeah. Four for me. Yeah. And then. Well, this is assuming we make them. Like, I, I would wait to... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. You go last. Yeah, I will go last. Everybody make your rolls. <laughs> no, you have to go first. <laughs> That'll be a 10, baby. Nice. Oh, sorry, 11. So you get, you, 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 uh, cash one camaraderie. Yeah, and you have, a, you have an additional if you're, like, one short, but I mean, when you're getting a plus four. <laughs> yeah, you better make this. I got a 10. I got a 9. So you cash two camaraderie and you're adding three to your roll. Is that including my plus one? No, you're adding four to your roll total, including your bonus, yeah. Okay. And then there's two in the bank from just camaraderie being earned. Okay. So the ship matches speed perfectly. And, like, with Mal and Vico working together, you are... Ro- it's like, you know, the thing where, like, someone's hiding behind someone's back by, like, rotating around them? That's what your ship is doing as this thing is turning and trying to, like aim its giant volcanic cannons at you. You're matching that perfectly as you feel Sully rest a hand on your shoulder and, like, try as hard as he can to, like, ensure that the cannonball hits that perfect arc to land in this tiny spot that you feel it is near impossible to make. As you sit there, you hear you hear Sully whisper in your don't criff this up. <laughs> I was I was gonna go the other way. I was gonna say Jyla, you switched off your targeting computer. What's wrong? And if you roll snake eyes, I will warn it is not impossible for your ship to sink. <laughs> so. I got a 12 with the four people, so. Perfect. So, you feel that moment where you just know, like, that that is the moment to fire. The cannon fires, and you see, like, in slow motion, this tiny, like, hand-hollowed-out cannonball, its waiting is all off with, like, a cork stuffed in it, like, shaking as it flies through the air and, like, does the, like, thing where it, like, hits one, like, little rocky outcropping and bounces. You can, like, see it bouncing as it rolls in to, like, this highest craggy peak on the back of this giant turtle and there's a pause where it does nothing and the turtle just fully rotates towards you its head like rearing up as it begins to suck in water and you feel that lurch of the ship being pulled in and then there's like a momentary pause its mouth snaps shut and you can hear like the cracking popping sound of a sudden temperature change at the very core of this creature as its molten lava heart turns to stone yeah and the whole thing cools from the inside out yeah you feel like this moment of perfect success as you weighed a situation thought through it found a perfect weak point and didn't immediately sprint towards danger and as you have that thought, you have a splitting headache and collapse to the ground. Sully, at the same moment, you feel the same thing as you collapse to the ground. What does everyone else do? I think I think Vi is like in the middle of like Yes! <clears throat> okay! Uh Jyla? G- Jyla Sully? Uh Am I passed out, or are we are we passed out, or are we just in like immense pain? Uh, you would both be like passed out. You're in, you're not like able to do anything at the moment, right? You're like unresponsive, but maybe moaning. Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure, like, if it was like uh, I can talk through this, or if I am like no, you're like out. Like they would have to like come and slap at you. <laughs> 
Malcolm's medical training. The doctor's asleep. Smack him. Maybe I'll get better. <laughs> Is are we still being like dragged in? To no, that thing has basically turned to stone. Oh, the whole thing has. Oh, okay. Yeah, then if we're not, if we don't have to worry about that, uh, yeah, Vi's gonna, who, whichever one is closest and just kind of like hand on shoulder, try to shake. You gotta pick one or the other. We'll say Jyla. Okay. You rush up to Jyla and, uh, shake her, uh, like try to shake her awake, uh, Jyla, you slowly, like, blink your way awake. And what color are your eyes? Uh, brown. Cool. So, you open at first one brown eye as you're kind of, like, slowly trying to blink yourself awake. And as you open both eyes, uh, Vika, you see one of them is glowing gold. And that is where we will end. Oh, not another one. We hope you enjoyed this latest episode of Outlaws Wanted. Music for this show is from danosongs.com, audionautics.com, zapsplat.com, and in the public domain. If you like this show, you can check out more of our actual play podcasts at the Wandering Gamer Network's website or on Podbean. You can also interact with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We also post Let's Play videos under our YouTube channel, the Wandering Gamer Network, And on Twitch, we can be found at wandering underscore gamers. Now remember, it's not the outlaw that makes trouble, it's the trouble that makes the outlaw. (laughs) 